Hey, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Hey, it is so good to be with you. Uh, let me give you just a quick uh, update about something. Uh, I want to say thanks, like, the, like the, the video said, thank you so much for coming to be a part of Summerfest. Let me tell you a quick story. So me and John Skacko, the guy who preaches here with me uh, pretty often, uh, we showed up at 1130 at Brush High School to start setting up, and there was a car already waiting there, and I walked up to this lady. I'm like, hey, are you here? And she's like, yeah, I'm here for Summerfest, and she had these kids in the back seat. And I go, ma'am, you realize this event doesn't start for three more hours? And she's like, I, I do. She goes, but you need to understand. She goes, we, we depend on this. She says, there's no way in the world I could ever take my kids to a store and buy them back to school clothes. I couldn't afford shoes. She goes, there's no way I could go buy them backpacks and school supplies. She goes, I can't thank you guys enough for what you do to make a difference in our life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so welcome. So thank you to all of you who just went out and did the amazing because really the impact and the lives that you changed was just unbelievable. So thanks, you guys, so much for being great. Yep. <laughs> Yep. And hey, as many of you know, eight weeks ago, we started a sermon series that we called Playlist. And I can't tell you how many of you have called me on the phone or emailed me or even texted me to tell me how much you've loved this series. And I do want to say thanks to everybody in our preaching and worship team for all the work that they've gone in and put in to make this series happen. But what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to wrap up this series by looking at a song that made a huge impact on me personally. It's a song from the movie, The Greatest Showman. Now, the reason the song made such an impression on me is because the film was based on the life of P.T. Barnum. And when P.T. was just a child, his dad worked as a tailor for the wealthiest people in New York City. But P.T. didn't want to follow in his father's footsteps. He didn't want to become a tailor P.T. Barnum wanted to create something that the world had never seen. And even though he didn't want to be a tailor, his dad still made him go to work with him on occasion. And one afternoon, his dad took him with him to tailor a suit for a very wealthy man whose name was Mr. Hallett. And while they were there, P.T. met Hallett's daughter whose name was Charity. And he instantly fell in love. But just a few weeks after they met, Charity was sent off to finishing school, which meant that P.T. wouldn't get to see her for years. So, to keep their feelings afloat, P.T. Barnum wrote her letters, hundreds of them. And every word written on those sheets of paper was a seed falling on a fertile heart. Well, years later, Charity finally came home from finishing school, and when that day arrived, P.T. walked her parents' driveway. He knocked on the door, and he told her dad, I don't have much, but I promise I will give her everything you have given her. And even though he didn't approve of their relationship, they solidified their childhood romance by running away and getting married. But the story didn't end there. You see, even though this couple had each other, they still struggled financially. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't eat in the finest restaurants in town. All they had was each other. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. Because the shipping company that Barnum was working for lost all of their boats in a horrible storm in the Atlantic. So Barnum found himself unemployed. And he ended up taking the biggest risk of his life. He decided to make his childhood dream a reality. He decided to create something that the world had never seen. Just a few days after he lost his job, Barnum went to a bank and he took out an enormous loan. And he started a museum in downtown Manhattan that showcased various wax models. He called his new venture Barnum's American Museum of Curiosity. The problem was his new business didn't do very well. Sales were slow, so on the suggestion of his children, he decided to showcase live talent. And he went out and he searched the entire city for misfits. People who could attract huge crowds because of their freakish appearance. And he ended up hiring tall people, short people. He hired a bearded lady, trapeze artist. He went out and got the men and women that the world basically ignored. But when he took this group of people and put them on the stage, 
Everyone was amazed at what they could do, and who could blame them? Because these entertainers were the men and women who'd been brainwashed into believing they would never amount to anything. But when Barnum put them on stage, everybody marveled at what they could do. In fact, his entertainers became such a worldwide phenomenon that they were asked to travel all the way to England to perform for Queen Victoria. And that's when Barnum's success really took off. His show got so popular that he began to gain favor with the most exclusive people in Manhattan. But when he started to rub elbows with the socially elite, he started to distance himself from his own entertainers because he wanted everyone to view him as a refined businessman. And one night, one night his performers came to a gathering where the city's most influential were socializing. And P.T. heard a knock on the door, and when he opened the door, he saw his band of misfits standing in the hallway. But when he opened the door and saw who it was, he shut the door in their face. And when he shut that door, it absolutely broke their hearts. Because his entertainers knew what people had been saying about them. They knew that even though they could draw a crowd, it didn't change the emptiness they felt inside. And when that door was shut, Letty Lutz began to sing how it felt to live her entire life as an outcast. And this was the song that she sang. 